What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So I have 12 cards to go over today. Uh, these are 12 cards that the developers have recently reviewed on the CDPR stream from the open. Um, we have two from each faction and one from the, the neutral category of cards. So starting off, uh, this is a neutral Regis Bloodlust. Uh, four strength, nine provisions, deploy damage an enemy unit by four, reach two, death blow, banish it. So, I mean, if you've been playing Went, that you, you know that this card is very similar to another card, and that is Efrit. Efrit has identical stats, everything. Uh, it doesn't have reach two, not that that matters, uh, and it does not have the ability to banish a unit. Um, <clears throat> so this is obviously strictly better. Uh, the scenario where a frit is better is if you're new to the game and you want that kind of effect and you don't want to craft a legendary and a frit's an epic so uh, other than that very small minor detail uh they do the same thing except this has the potential um to be better so the cases where death blow is better is when your opponent is resurrecting the card or using that card later on so examples of this would be any kind of death wish so if your opponent plays solano harpy and you play regis bloodlust you deny the death wish same goes for ancient foglet and really any death wish card um you can play this on roach against nilf card and then when they go to a sire roach there won't be a roach there so uh th this effect also works against there and the final one would be like a lippy deck uh, a lippy deck let's say you want a lippy coral or you want a lippy one of the witchers um later on when you uh, recycle your deck uh you will not have that card in your graveyard to put back into your deck uh when you go ahead and play lippy so uh there, there, there's a number of different uses for um or the ability to banish one of your opponent's cards we see this on cypher and willy right now i actually run it in one of my square lists uh, it's very very strong against certain decks because being able to completely blow out a solano uh, a harpy egg is huge um will this card see play 100 percent Ifrit is seeing a lot of play right now and this card is strictly better so great card uh if you like playing removal this card is good um i do want to say um th this was also posted in the open they did mention that witchers and uni cairo are getting nerfed uh we have no information as to what the nerf is um all we know is there's going to be less of a reason to run them right uh in this expansion we, we are getting a good a, a, a couple cards that allow you to uh, increase the consistency in your deck so uh in the upcoming patch hopefully witchers aren't seeing s play as much as they used to um my guess there's two options there's three options i talked about this earlier on stream um option a they can completely rework the cards start from scratch uh, make them do completely different things yeah they could do that i don't think that's going to be the case because that requires more work and continuously changing cards not fun um the other two options are provision slash strength change so i think what i would like to see is witchers down to two strength from three strength um or two three two right so two of the threes go down to two um or the other option is bring them from seven provisions up to eight provisions um the thing is i think they still see play eh. it's the, the the problem is yes the thinning is great obviously but it's a nice round one proactive tempo play. It's a nice nine or 12 with Roach. So I, both of the cases, if they go down to two or two, three, two, or they go down or up to eight provisions, obviously all of those cases, Witchers will see less play. There's no doubt about that. Um, I personally would prefer two, three, two or two, 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 um, just because it makes decks that do have the death blow two a little better, which means Witchers are much, much worse. So. I, I would like to see the 2-2-2, two, 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 but eh, we'll see. As far as the Uni Cairo, we have no information. Um, I don't know. Maybe they do 3 damage, and when you have the other one, they do 6 damage. I I have no idea. Um, if, if they no longer do 4 damage, um, then this card is great. Because then, if you do want to play that 4 damage removal, you're going to have to run this card and a frick, probably. So, um, very good card. Moving along, we have a neutral card called Portal. This card is 13 provisions. It is an artifact. Deploy summon two random units with four provision costs from your deck on both sides of this unit. Uh, it does say random. There, there is the word random right here. Um, but it's not... It, it's You can control it, right? 
It's controlled randomness. The idea of this kind of card is uh, you, you, you put two engines in your deck, or sorry, you put four engines in your deck uh, that you want to pull out, right? So um, we'll say Nilfgaard. Let's say you want Nausicaa's and let's say you used to play Infiltrators. You slap this on turn one or some turn in round one. You pull out a combination of either two Nausicaa, two Infiltrator, or one of each. Uh, you obviously play it on the melee row so that you can get the Infiltrator proc. Um, and, yeah. Um, if you can get it in a deck and run four different engines, it's pretty good. Just because uh, you're, you're developing two threats at once, which is typically harder to remove. Um, Gimpy is still a card, so maybe we see a little bit more Gimpy if uh, Portal is popular. Uh, but, once again... Because you should be running probably four engines, because you can't bank on having this in round one, um, and you might have to play one of those other engines in round one. Um, I think you do need to run a minimum of four engines. So, yeah, Gimpy is sometimes good against this. Uh, not always, because, well, it could pull two different units. So, uh, the important thing of this card is obviously to be playing it in a list that runs engines and no other four provision card costs cards uh so like if you're playing Scoia'tael uh, and you put this card into your deck you would not be playing neophytes you'd not be playing dragoons you'd not be playing skirmishers you would be playing i don't know two sword masters and two whatever elven scouts elven scouts yes uh the cards that work with um traps so i don't think that that's good for Scoia'tael just because the engines are kind of meh but it, it, it could be okay in other factions um this is comparable to Witchers, so Witchers are uh, three sets of seven for 21. This is uh, 13, and then you have two fours, and it rounds out to 21. Um, so it's compar comparable in that sense, and both of them thin two cards. Uh, where the comparison kind of falls flat is you have to draw this in round one, or you, you have to draw this sole card, right? So for Witchers, there's three Witchers, and as long as you draw one of the three Witchers, uh, you're thinning the other two out. Whereas this... Uh, if you draw the other two engines, you're probably mulliganing them away. Uh, but you have to draw this card. Um, granted, you don't have to draw it in round one. You can play it in round two or round three. You just have to make sure to mulligan those engines away so that there are targets for this to pull out. Um, but in terms of thinning in round one, it's going to be nowhere near as consistent as Witchers. But um, I do think it's a good card. I do think it will see some play in some lists. Maybe there's some new engines coming out, um, which would make this card better. Um, <clears throat> also, Oriole, uh, this is a card that, um, there are a lot of mixed feelings about the card. It's the neutral card, 10 provisions, 1 strength, destroy an artifact, and then boost itself by the, uh, provision cost of the artifact. So in this case, if you destroy this, uh, it becomes 14 strength. That's pretty good. Um, there's another card that we're not going to review today, but they released another uh, artifact that's 12 provisions that allows you to tutor a special from your deck um so as you can see we're getting a lot of these artifacts that have uh, very powerful deploy effects but they don't have any kind of like ongoing effect such as like a master crafted spear or something so maybe oriole sees play i i i i've said this before and i'll say it again i think oriole can see play in a meta where portal uh, the, the other, I think it's Land of a Thousand Fables, which I'll go over in the next video, and Summoning Circle. Summoning Circle is very strong because it is uh, for Oriole in that uh, it is high provisioned and the effect is very, very strong. So if these three cards are all seeing play over like, I don't know, 70 to 80 percent of the meta, then I think Oriole might be playable. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. Um, we'll see. Uh, I love the card. It's great. It's great for deck building. Um, it does add that thinning. If you do draw it in round one, you could, in theory, increase the odds of drawing this with a card like Avalok the Sage. Um, so yeah, I like the card. Um, there'll probably be maybe two or three decks that can utilize this. Um, I, by no means auto-include, but uh, it is a very cool card. Moving along to Monsters. This is Proto Flutter. Ten provisions, four strength, deploy damage an enemy unit by three, dominance, Drain an enemy unit by three instead. So dominance is a new keyword, but we've had the effects. Uh, so Wild Hunt Riders, where you, as long as you have the highest unit, it pulls out the other rider. Uh, my 
guess would be they would switch over to dominance as well. Uh, basically, dominance is you control the highest unit. Um, so they're, they're just cutting the words down and throwing in a new keyword, dominance. So worst case scenario, you play this, you damage an enemy by three. It's a seven for 10. Is that good? No, that's terrible, obviously. Um, if you have dominance, it drains instead. So this gives plus three. So you're looking at a 10 for 10. That's okay. Um, Monsters typically doesn't have a lot of damage. Uh, most of their damaging effects are like two damage with Drowner. Uh, you have Cyclops. Uh, you have uh, Wrath, but all of these are contingent on uh, the unit on the board that you're throwing into it. Um, it's okay. I mean, a 10 for 10 is not bad. A 10 for 10 is not bad at all. Um, I would say in old monsters, this wouldn't be good. And when I say old monsters, I mean pre ghoul change. Because typically, if you're playing expensive monster cards, you wanted monster cards that have very large bodies so that you could double dip into the large bodies with Ghoul and Azro. Uh, but because of the Ghoul change, and since they only hit bronzes now, um, typically you play Azro, you just hit the Spear Tip or like a Caldwell or something. So you don't really need more large units. So yeah, I think this is okay. I think it's good enough. Monsters typically play tall units, so pulling off the dominance isn't too difficult. Uh, I believe it is a vampire, so if you're playing a vampire deck, you're most likely going to be running this card. So, it's also removal in a faction that doesn't currently have a ton of removal. So, yeah, I, I, I think this card will see some play. If I had to rate it out of 5, I'd probably give it like a, a 3. It's, it's, it's not bad. It's playable. It's, it's not auto-include or anything. Um, <clears throat> maybe there's a big monster deck that does auto-include this. I don't know. Uh, but it is a solid card. It is playable. I've seen this at nine provisions. They leaked it on stream. I think it was nine. Uh, I think the ones on this website right here are updated. So I, I guess they pulled it back to 10. Um, obviously, all these numbers are subject to change. Uh, CDPR can change them as much as they want uh, before the uh, 28th. So, um, But at the moment, it is a four that damages or drains by three. So eh, it's not bad. I think it will see some play. Uh, moving on, Crimson Curse. So what the entire expansion is being called. Uh, this is a special card for monsters. It is 11 provisions. Uh, another card where provisions might change. I have seen many different numbers on this one. Uh, destroy an allied unit, then apply a Blood Moon Row effect to both allied row. And set its duration equal to the destroyed unit's power. Blood Moon, every allied turn on turn start, boost a random vampire on this row by two. So essentially... You destroy one of your units on the board, uh, and we'll, for however much strength it has, when you go to destroy it, you give your rows that many turns of Blood Moon. Uh, both of your rows. Um, Blood Moon is two, two boost to turn on vampires. So, worst case scenario, you play this, you consume a unit, you have no vampires, you get negative value. Obviously, that's terrible, but yeah. You, typically you're probably playing this in a vampire deck so if you consume a one strength unit um you get blood moon for one turn we'll assume that you have a vampire on each row you get four value out of that so you're getting right you're getting plus four minus the one that you're consuming you're getting three value obviously that's pretty bad right um but that's not how you use this you use you use it on bigger units so let's say you consume an eight right let's say you consume an eight with crimson curse you're looking at eight turns of uh plus two plus two which is you know that, that's pretty decent um you're looking at 32 value minus the uh, eight point body that you're consuming so you're looking at 24 value uh is 24 for 11 good yeah i, I would say 24 for anything under than like 15 is good um but the problem is is it's contingent on a lot a lot of things one it's contingent on a long round right Obviously, this card is pretty mediocre in a short round. Two, it's contingent on you having a vampire on two different rows, right? So how difficult is that? I don't know. Um, so that's another thing you have to remember. Three, you need to have a large body for uh, for you to consume. So it, it, it's one of those low risk, super high rewards. Um, do note if people start, if this is like a really good card, um, because it is a boon, I'm assuming, just like it was uh, in pre-Homecoming, my guess is Fog would counter it or any any weather effect would counter it. So if you do go for that crazy 24-point value um, and your opponent plays a Fog, 
while you're losing half that of value immediately. Um, and that kind of sucks. So this card, I mean, I don't know how CDPR is going to balance this card. You, you could make this nine provisions and this still might suck. I have no idea. Because the instant this card becomes good, I just start running Fog. And <laughs> this, <laughs> this card sucks then. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I have no idea how to evaluate this type of card. Also, any kind of resets kind of beats this kind of deck. So, like, I don't know. Novellan into Erden is an entire board reset, which is crazy. Um, I don't think that'll be something that people run, but in theory, you could. Uh, hopefully, Novellan gets changed. Anyway, yeah. It is a very interesting card. It is high risk, high reward. Very high risk. But I, I guess there is a high reward, so... It's... It, it'll be interesting to see what number they put this at uh, on March 28th when the card goes live. Um, I don't think I'm going to play it at 11 provisions. It's, uh, yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of the card, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Nilfgaard, Damien. This card's 11 provisions, 5 strength, order, refresh your leader's ability. So we're getting, what, old Calvite back? Or sorry, old Kahir back? Um, where you get to refresh your leader's ability. Okay, cool. Um, it is order, not deploy. So no crazy, like, decoy effects with, like, I'm here and going infinite on, like, Nausicaa. Uh, the card... Expensive. I, I believe on the, the dev stream that they show this, it was, like, a 13 or 14. Um, so I, I guess they brought it down to 11. So what kind of leaders do you want to replay? Obviously, replaying Usurper probably doesn't do anything. Uh, redoing Morven, we don't know if it gives Morven one tick or three ticks. Uh, even if it was three ticks, I still don't think it would be worth it. Uh, because you're getting 11-11 for best case scenario. Um, and if your opponent kills this or locks this or any of those things, then you're losing all six of those points. So you, you have to be getting a considerable amount of points out of your leader. And there is one leader that does do that. Well, technically two. M here on some like crazy like shenanigan combos, like Vivian or whatever. Um, but more importantly, Ardol. So if you make your deck so that you can steal a four, you're looking at an eight point swing. And if you steal an engine, it's better than an eight. Um, is eight, so it would be a 13 for 11. Is that good? Yeah, that's really good. Um, if you can get it up to stealing a five, then you're looking at like a 15 for an 11, which is really strong. Um, so the other thing to consider is a lot of decks or some decks play Ockfist. Ockfist is uh, five strength and you typically play it as your second to last card in round three um, because you do want that uh, order effect uh, the next turn. And he typically goes off. Ockfist goes off almost every time. Very, very rarely does Octus not go off. Uh, and this card is very similar. You can play it the exact same way. You play it really late. Uh, your opponent doesn't have removal and it survives and you get to redo your, um, you get to redo your leader. And th this is where, because you have to hold on to it, I'm not quite sure you could do it with them here. I, I feel like it might be gimmicky, but I'm sure there's somebody who's already theory crafted a deck that abuses them here playing twice. I, yeah, we'll see. Um, so I, I think the card is pretty good in an Ardol deck. Uh, we're getting two, uh, we're getting a new bronze tactic for Ardol. It's four provisions, uh, the remove a shield, do three damage, or like boost one of your units by three and give a shield, uh, four, four point tactic card, which is very, very strong for Ardol. Um, so I, I think this card will see some play in Ardol. Maybe there's some crazy M here combo, in which case this card could be played, um, but for the other leaders, I don't think this will see much play. Uh, and then the new leader, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, the second card for Nilfgaard, Duchess Informant. This card is five provisions, one strength, spine, deploy, spawn, and play a base copy of an enemy non-spying unit. So uh, we're getting another spy. We saw a spy earlier, which allowed you to uh, look at two gold cards and play one. This card allows you to play a base copy of one of your opponent's cards so like the best case scenario would be something like uh the bronze seven drop in monsters or something um what's nice about this card is a it's a spy which means it's pushing the spy archetype but it also pushes the assimilate 
uh, archetype. I think there might actually be a decent like spy Nilfgaard slash assimilate deck. Um, and because this card double dips into both, right? You, you, you get the spying proc and you get the assimilate proc because you're playing a card from your opponent's faction. It might be good. Uh, and if that double archetype works out, uh, this card is very, very good because it boosts your enforcers and it boosts your assimilate cards. So um, I, I think this card is very good if assimilate spy nilf guard works. Um, is this card good in just regular spy nilf guard? Um, I mean, I, I've played a decent amount of spy nilf guard and like you go crazy with it. You, you go to the point where you play... I'm going to blank out on the name, but the, the 10 provision card that allows you to make another copy of a card. So you make like a six strength enforcer uh, and you'll like play necromancy and you'll operator enforcer uh, and you'll go crazy. You'll play a ton of enforcers. You'll play like five at a time or something. Throw like an Ardal in there and then you get to steal your opponent's uh, enforcer that you make with operator and you can get a ton of enforcers. So every single spy proc that you throw on your opponent's side of the board is like plus anywhere between six to ten points so is, is this card good in that kind of deck yes because it is a spy and any spy is more points for you um so if you can incorporate assimilate into that uh and get the extra value with this i, I think this card will be very good in a deck like that um once again will that deck be good we'll have to see it's going to be meta dependent that deck is kind of dependent on how much removal is in the meta and because you need Cairo are getting nerfed maybe we see less removal um yeah we'll see this card is super super hard to evaluate because it is very dependent on whether or not assimilate is good so we'll see uh knighthood this card is not very hard to evaluate at all this is a northern realm seven provision gold card split six boost randomly between all units on an allied row Six for seven, is that good? No, that's not very good. But this is called this this called this card called um infantry in Northern Realms. It is three strength, four provisions. Every time this card gets boosted by one, it pings one of your opponent's units by one. So if you play an infantry on a row and you play knighthood on it the turn after, um that infantry gets plus six and then pings for six. So you're looking at twelve value. Is that good? Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, it's comparable to the, like, spectral, spectral whale card, Delirium, I believe, in SK, uh, in that you play, like, a greatsword, you ping your opponent's units for six damage, and your greatsword gets plus six. Uh, the difference between, uh, the two different, um, comparisons is infantry is already auto-included in every Meeb deck. They all play it. It's great. It's super cheap. It's super easy to utilize. You have Meeb, you have Ana, uh, they, no problem getting value out of uh, infantry. Whereas great swords, it, you kind of have to build a deck around it because you're doing damage. Sometimes play like rain or like tremors. Um, playing herald kind of is kind of weird. Spears are a little over costed. You could play regis, right? It, it's just it's just a little bit more complex. So th this card just fits really nicely into the faction. Um, I think this card's going to see a lot of play. It's not hard to slot this in. It's a flexible card. Putting an infantry on a row is now going to become one of the most deadly NR engines. If you see an infantry, you have to kill it. If you don't kill it, your opponent's going to play a 12 for 7 uh, and blow you out. So, yeah, this card's very strong with infantry. There's no question about it. It's good with Ana, too. It's just a good card. Very strong card. Uh, Kud Kudak. This is a 6 provision, 4 strength. Uh, Northern Realms card, deploy Purify adjacent units. So you're paying two provisions to Purify two units. How much is Purify worth? Eh. So like your best case scenario is your opponent bleeds two of your like engines or whatever, and you play this next or in between the two units and you deny the Purify, and you deny the, or you deny the bleed to deny the uh, units from dying, uh, or you're playing against Nilfgaard and you have two engines on the front row. Maybe you played Hensold and you pulled out two Arbalists on the front row. And your opponent plays um, an Enhanced Ox and double locks them. You can play this card and unlock both of them in the same turn and continue to get value out of your engines. Is that good? Well, in that exact scenario, yes, that's very good. Unlocking two cards in the same turn for two provisions is really, really good. Um, 
But the problem is, what if your opponent doesn't lock your cards? What if your opponent just removes your cards? What if your opponent isn't playing bleed? Then this is just a four for six. So it's an interesting tech card. Uh, very dependent on meta. If there's a lot of nilf card, I think this card's okay. Uh, typically, unlock is worth one to one and a half provisions. So if you can somehow, I mean, all you have to do is play all your engines next to each other, and then if they ever lock two, you can uh, remove the lock on two of them. So I, I think this card will see a bit of play. Um, not that much, though, unless Nilfgaard is dominant. Otherwise, everyone's just going to be playing removal, in which case this card is pretty lackluster. So yeah, I, I don't think this card will see much play, unless it is a Nilfgaard-dominated meta. Moving along, we have Skoyata, Water of Rock-On. This card is 9 provisions, spawn and summon a Dryad Fledgling to an allied row. If you control a Dryad, spawn and summon 2 Dryad Fledglings to an allied row instead. So, uh, Dryad Fledgling is a 3 strength Dryad with Harmony. Um, Harmony, for those of you who don't know, every time you play a Skoyata uh, unit with a different class that you don't already control, uh, your Harmony cards get plus 1. So, an example would be, uh, if you have a Squiatel Dryad with Harmony on board, you play Panther, that is a Squiatel Beast, your Harmony would get plus one. If you were to play Barnabas the Gnome, uh, he, because he is a Gnome, your Harmony would get plus one. If you were to play a Skirmisher, your Harmony would get plus one. Now, if you were to play Skags, your Harmony would not get plus one because you already have a Dwarf on the board. However, if your opponent removes the Skirmisher from your side of the board and then you play the Skags, then the harmony gets plus one. So pretty straightforward. Um, is this card good? Eh. Let's just assume that you're always getting two Dryad Fledglings because if you're not getting two uh, Dryad Fledglings, this card sucks, right? You're paying nine provisions and you're spawning a three with harmony. Is that good? No, that's atrocious. So let's just assume that you always have two. Uh, and the card right after this kind of, I mean, I guess we could go to it right now. Uh, this is Fuave. Deploy, play a nature card from your deck. Nature, Mystic, it's been like going back and forth as to what they're going to call it. We do know that this card can summon Water of Broccolon. So because this is a Dryad, it immediately meets the condition uh, and makes it so that Water of Broccolon will always go off. We'll, we'll come back to this card in a bit. Um, but So let's just assume, for sake of argument, you're always getting two Dryad Fledglings. Is this card good? Uh, you, you're playing six strength for nine provisions and their engines. But... The problem with Harmony is typically, if I had to guess, you'll probably get two Harmony procs on average. Maybe three. Pushing three is not going to be very likely, I don't think, unless you, unless you draw really well. So your best case scenario would be you, you play Fwab, you pull out Water Broccoli on turn one, and then the rest of your hand is Beast, Dwarfs, Elves, Gnomes, Dragons, whatever. Uh, and then your Harmony goes crazy. But that is assuming a long round. That is assuming you draw Fwab in your opening hand. It is also assuming your opponent does have, doesn't have any removal for Fwab. So, or for the fledgling. So, I, I think this might be okay in like a in a heavy harmony deck. Maybe you play like a bunch of engines. Another um, Skoytel unit is Smuggler. Smugglers is uh, the card that boosts a card in your hand by one every turn. Uh, and it is a human, which is good, right? Because that's another one of those tags. Uh, that would boost the harmony. So maybe in like a pretty heavy engine deck, this card could be okay. Uh, the idea is, yeah, maybe they can remove this engine, but if they're spending removal on these engines, it means they're not going to have removal for other engines. It's just like NR decks that just play a ton of engines. Right? You don't need every engine to live. You just need like one or two or three of them to live. Uh, and this would be the example of this card. So I, I, I do think in like an engine kind of deck, this card could be quite good because the idea is they cannot remove everything. So yeah. Uh, Fwav, as we mentioned earlier, two strength, nine provisions. Uh, you get to tutor out a nature card. Nature cards are that card, and yeah, we don't really know of any others. So uh, it's going to be dependent on what those other nature cards are. Um, cards that are similar to this are Menno and Kira. Kira gets to pull out a uh, spell or a special. Um, I think it's... I don't remember. Um, and Menno is a tactic. Neither of those cards see much play other than Menno. Menno... Meno gets seen in one deck, and it's the double horn deck. Basically, you play horn from hand, and then you assire the horn back into your deck, and then you Meno tutor it back out. Um, the only reason that card sees playing that deck is because, well, turns out playing a 15-point provision 
uh, or, or 15 strength uh, spell is pretty good when you can do it twice. So it, it kind of makes sense as to why Mena is in that deck. Um, yeah, this card's super hard to evaluate because we don't actually know what the other nature cards are. So maybe they're a new nature card. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but this, if you if you want to play Water of Broccolon, you should be playing Fob. So if you are playing Water, you're definitely going to be playing Fob. Hopefully there's another um, nature card that you can play in the deck because typically you don't want to be playing like a tutor card with only one option. So we'll see. It's going to be dependent on the other nature cards. Moving along to SK, we have Sigvald. This card is eight provision, six strength, order, damage a unit by one, reach two, cooldown one, berserk, damage a unit by two instead. For those of you who don't know what berserk is, berserk is whenever the unit reaches half of its HP, uh, the ability trigger. So in this case, it would be three strength. Is this card good? Um, well, let's look at Pavko. Pavko is a Scoia'tael card. It is five strength, eight provisions, ping a unit for one damage every turn. This is the exact same card with one extra strength and an additional ability. <laughs> um, yeah, this card's pretty good. It is a crazy Pavko. Um, if your opponent wants to kill this card, they have to kill the card. Uh, they can't, like, panther it and then, like, archer ethne ping it. Because if, I mean, they can do that. It just means one of those turns are going to be pinging for two instead of one. Um, it is a it is an interesting card in that, sure, if you want to double the damage you're doing every turn, uh, you just damage this by half. And there, there are some berserk cards that allow you to uh, damage other cards. But... If you're damaging this down to three strength, it makes it much easier to kill, right? Um, if, if this card was three strength, damage a unit by two for six provisions, or for eight provisions, it wouldn't be very good because your opponent would just do three damage and kill it. So most of the time, you're just going to be playing this for a six for eight that pings for one every turn. And that's good. That's just good. Um, and you're going to get an extra two damage if your opponent damages it, if they can't instantly kill it. And most, most decks cannot instantly do six damage other than like a salt Kirk or something in Northern Realm. So is this card good? Yes, this card's great. I don't even think you have to play this in a Berserk deck. I think you can just throw this into every single SK deck. This card is just good. Very good card. And... The last card for SK, Nut the Callus. This card is 9 provision, 6 strength, deploy damage an allied unit uh, to the right by half its power, then damage an enemy unit by that amount. So when you first look at this card, it looks terrible. It's a Cyclops. Cyclops is a 5 for 6 that throws one of your units at your opponent's card. This is a 6 for 9. Why on earth would you play this card? It's so expensive. Um, this card is a warrior. So if you're playing an ice deck or you're playing Hemdall, uh, Hemdall will get boosted by the value that you throw or half the value of the card that you target. Um, so that is something worth mentioning. You also have to remember this This is an SK. SK plays cards like uh, Flamingo and typically it earned in seeing a, a good chunk of play. So in, in decks like that, yeah, you're sacrificing half the strength, but my guess is you're probably don't really care right if you play olaf and you use uh callus on olaf and throw four strength you can then just click on the olaf and get all that strength back plus an additional four uh this also synergizes very well with any card that has berserk right because it does half of its power which is every berserk card it's like that's what they want so this works very well in a berserk deck um yeah is it overcosted? Maybe, but being able to instantly proc every form of your Berserk on top of that other synergy like Olaf and the fact that you do typically like playing resets uh, in SK. There's a card called Restore. This card sees no play, but maybe, maybe Restore starts seeing play next patch. I have no idea. So this card might seem a little underwhelming, but there are lots of ways where you can make it so that... Uh, the card that you're damaging doesn't actually lose any value. And this card, uh, basically the half of whatever you're throwing, uh, you get full value. So the example of Olaf, um, this is a 10 for nine, right? So 
I, I do think this card is playable. It's 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 larger chunk removal for SK, which isn't bad. Typically, SK's removal is like pings with light long ships are like crack. Uh, they have pirate captain, and then other than that, they play like neutrals that can like Cairo for four damage. Uh, and the final one is Kalmar. So this this is like in between. You can go anywhere from like two damage to like six damage. So um, I I think this card is okay. I think there will be a few decks that do play this card. This is by no means an auto include, but I, I, I do think it's a solid card. And I believe that's all the cards. So these are 12 cards that CDPR uh, recently leaked on their dev stream. I'm very excited about them. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Uh, do you think that I was a little too harsh or too generous on some of these cards? Um, yeah, your overall thoughts on these 12 cards. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys on the next one.